Many of the genres that transitioned from 2D to 3D underwent many changes in how they looked and played. Racing games were among the most radical transformations during the time. Most had been simple overhead affairs, or games that used some combination of hardware or software sprite and background scaling. When 3D polygons showed up, all of a sudden, we had tracks with real elevation changes, cars with real damage modeling and physics. Things went from very simple to much more realistic pretty damn quickly. In fact, the genre itself had been stagnant for years for me, and all of a sudden, they were the games I looked forward the most to playing on my 32-bit machines. Software developers didn't waste time advancing the technology either. While the beginning of the polygon boom was mostly arcade-like racers, we quickly evolved into more simulation-like games that really added a lot of stuff we'd never seen before. In this episode, we will be taking a look at my top 10 racing games for the Sega Saturn. I didn't set out to be different or include variety here. I genuinely tried to list the games that I simply had the most fun with and played the most often. I've also added sections for honorable mentions and one for disappointments. So sit back, relax, and get ready for some top-notch 32-bit action. There were a lot of good racing games on the Saturn, so I decided to add a space for a few games that didn't quite make my top 10, but are still very much worth playing. While it had its issues, Hang On GP could be a lot of fun if you had the right setup. This one plays so much better with an analog wheel or controller, so if you've never tried it with those, be sure you do. It has an especially good soundtrack, and while the graphics aren't incredible, they do enough to make it feel like a step above the stuff you saw on the 16-bit machines. Scorcher was a futuristic racing game where you had sort of an anti-gravity motorcycle that controlled a bit like a ping-pong ball. The graphics were really good and it ran at an impressive clip. I always wanted to be good at this game, but it definitely takes a certain level of commitment to get there. There's a great racer here if you can meet its challenge. Street Racer was a nice throwback title on the Saturn. It took the type of visuals you saw on the Mega Drive and then cranked them up with more special effects and more detail on the screen. The end result was one of the prettiest kart racers you've ever seen, and it didn't play half bad either. How this game isn't more popular is beyond me. Our final honorable mention is Grand Chaser, also known as Cyber Speedway. I wanted to throw a little love this game's way because it was early in the system's life and I actually imported it at the Japanese launch, so I was playing it well before most of the other games you'll see in this video. It's not the best looking or playing game, but it had a wow factor that early that you really have to appreciate. Later games would really outclass it, but for a time, I had a lot of fun with it. No question we all had our letdowns during the life of the Saturn. Sometimes a game just didn't play like you wanted, or was missing features you really needed to enjoy it. The following games really let me down. While I wouldn't call them terrible, I certainly don't consider them particularly good. My friends and I had a blast with Destruction Derby on the PlayStation. I mean, the entire point of the game was to crash into one another. How could that not be fun? But when it came to the Saturn, it was butchered in every way. Horrific polygon pop-in, poor performance, and just an overall ugly presentation ruined what had made the game fun in the first place. This is one game that should have stayed exclusive to Sony's platform. Sega Touring Car Championship was meant to be the follow-up to the unforgettable Sega Rally, but things had gone horribly wrong. Whereas Sega Rally had a smooth-running, great-looking graphics engine, Sega Touring Car had been a mess. It hitches regularly doesn't look as good, and seems to have even more geometry pop-in despite being a later game. I could have lived with that if it had played well, but it doesn't, often leaving you feeling like you have very little control over the vehicle. You can adjust the settings to alleviate a lot of that, but you will likely develop a distaste for it long before you figure it out. I was so excited for Daytona Remix when it was announced. It was to be Daytona USA Reborn with the same great graphics that had been in Sega Rally. And for the most part, they succeeded visually with Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition. It definitely looked and ran better, but somewhere along the way, they also changed the damn gameplay. 
It feels nothing like Daytona did before, and with that, they broke one of the only areas the original actually had gotten right. A Japanese variation would help things a bit, but in the end, this game was still a massive letdown. I've always felt that Andretti Racing was one of the great unsung 32-bit racing games. It combines indie and stock car racing, it has two-player split screen, and it has numerous modes like seasonal racing, and you can adjust how your car handles. The graphics are perhaps the most surprising part. Instead of getting a watered-down port of the PlayStation game, this one actually holds its own and runs well. Add in over a dozen tracks and you have yourself a racing game not to be taken lightly. If you prefer something with a little more realism and depth than Sega's arcade ports, this one might be the one you've been looking for. When Wipeout was announced for the Saturn, I was mixed with both dread and fascination. Part of me wanted to see how it turned out, and part of me was repulsed by the idea of yet another terrible port. But you know what? Wipeout on the Saturn ended up being a very decent racing game. It doesn't look or run quite as smoothly as the PlayStation version, but what is here still plays well and has most of the content. There are some changes to the music, but again, what's here still sounds great. There were not a ton of combat racing games for the Saturn, so to get one this solid was quite the gift. It also taught me a fine lesson in expectation. Just because it isn't as good looking as it was before, doesn't mean it's ugly. Man, did I love me some Manx TT in the arcade. I really dug the deluxe cabinet with the bike that allowed you to turn by leaning your body. When it came home to the Saturn, I just had to have it. Sega farmed this one out to Tantalus Interactive and Perfect Entertainment, the two companies responsible for the wipeout port. And you know what? They did a decent job. The engine is smooth and while the draw distance is noticeable, it's not right in your face. This is another one that plays a ton better with the analog wheel or controller, so be sure to grab one if you need it. It's a bit short on content having only two tracks, but it's still a great racing game if you enjoyed the arcade. There are a lot of folks out there that hate on virtual racing for the Saturn, and I'll be the first to admit that it definitely has its problems, but it also has a bunch of reasons why it's still worth a go. It's got way more tracks than any version of the game before it, and it also has carts that you can use to get the hang of the gameplay. The graphics aren't arcade perfect, but they still run well and hold up fairly good for flat shaded visuals. Sega surprisingly licensed this out to Time Warner Interactive, a shocking move that made me wonder if they felt they had too many racing games for the Saturn and needed to cut back some of the content. Still, I enjoyed this one for what it was. Grab a buddy for some two-player split-screen card action, and I'm sure you'll agree. F1 Challenge takes some of the deeper F1 simulations and makes it much more accessible thanks to its arcade setup. There are six tracks to choose from, as well as a handful of licensed cars and drivers. Just enough to make it easy to jump into, and not enough to scare away the casuals. It's got a great looking graphics engine as well. You've got some light customizations you can make, and the gameplay is strong enough to be challenging, but not simmy enough to require hours and days to master it. 
It was the closest thing we got to Indy 500 on the Saturn, and while I would have much rather have had that, this one was a fine substitute. A lot of people may disagree, but I really enjoyed the improvements the Need for Speed received in its Saturn update. There were more tracks, it ran better, and the control was way more forgiving. I had enjoyed the 3DO version very much and was happy to see that the Saturn edition wasn't exactly the same game. The combination of exotic cars and locations made for a great time, and we even got a two-player split-screen mode to add to the excitement. I know the original has its fans, but for me, I really enjoyed the additions and changes here. It just looked and performed so much better here, it was nearly an entirely different game. Despite the sheer number of Polygon racing games on the Saturn, I'd be lying if I said Sega Ages Outrun didn't deserve a place on this list. So much care was put into making this one a winner. The graphics are spot on incredible, even surpassing the arcade original with a faster, smoother update. They also added some killer remix tunes, music that sounded great in the first place, but now is new all over again. It makes you realize that the Saturn could have done these sprite scaling games with its eyes closed yet Sega didn't touch the ones it really needed. The US Working Designs release lost the remixed music, so if you were in the market, the Japanese Sega Ages version is the one you want. What is there to say here? This is Road Rash. I really, really like Road Rash. You get to beat people up, buy new bikes, run from the cops, all the things you need to make you happy. It doesn't sound as good as the 3DO original, nor do some of the graphics come across the same, like the clouds in the sky, but it does run a whole lot better. The gameplay is among some of the most replayable of that entire generation, and that goes a long way. It's a game I still fire up often, a testament to its appeal. The optics of Daytona USA were bad, really bad. It was such a watered-down port of a beautiful arcade game. Many people hate on it till this very day. But for me, there was a time when there was not a better racing game in the entire world. My friends and I played it to death, challenging each other's times and spending hours trying to shave off just a few seconds. While I do agree that it has aged terribly from a visual standpoint, the gameplay was just plain incredible. It handled like a dream. The power sliding was perfect and it even used the analog wheel. It's ugly and runs rough, but I still love it for what it was. You knew this one was coming, didn't you? I mean, you've watched enough of my videos to know by now how much I love this game. When it was released in late 1995, it gave the Saturn something to be proud of. It looked and ran so well, finally giving Sega fans something positive to talk about. Side by side, it was amazing just how close the developers got this game to look. To me, it was the high point of Saturn racing games by a mile. I mean, nothing was even close. 
If Sega had the tools that created this for the machine at the launch, we may have had a very different outcome to the Saturn's fortunes. The very best part of this one is that even though it looks and sounds as good as it does, it happens to play even better. So, my top 10 racing games for the Sega Saturn. No doubt some of you have games you'd add or take away, but I think you'll agree that there are some respectable choices. While the Saturn's racing library was pretty small next to the likes of the PlayStation, I think it has some standouts that look and play incredibly. I was never partial to some of the Japanese racers like Initial D or the two Toge games, but even those are well worth playing. Had the platform been more successful, we may have gotten some Sega-made third-generation engines that really showed off what could have been done. I mean, if Sega Rally was anything to go by, there was a wealth of untapped potential there. Even if you hated my choices, there were dozens of other racing games for the system you can try out. Whether you liked motorcycles, stock cars, trucks, or even furry blue mascots, the Saturn has something for everyone. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.